Welcome to the Global Prayer Network, with Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. We pray this teaching will impact your life, and bring you closer in your walk with Jesus. Let's get ready to receive today's teaching from, Rev. Dr. Seth O. Lardy. Welcome, welcome, let us pray, may the words of my mouth, and the meditations of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Today we want to talk about surviving physical bodily storms. Physical bodily storms. Let me encourage you to make the very, very best of each day God blesses you with. Make the best of it because you never know when the bodily storms of life will hit you. None of us know. We wake up in the morning, we go through the day, and we never know when we will come under the attack of bodily storms. One of the greatest gifts of life, yeah, I believe you will agree with me, is the gift of good health. You may not have money, you may not have houses, uh, you may not have lands, you may not have people working for you, you may not have anything to brag or to boast about. But when you have good health, it makes all the difference in the world. Good health is priceless. I was thinking about the woman who had the issue of blood and the scripture says she spent every dime she had trying to gain good health. Why? Because health is a wonderful thing. The dictionary defines health as the state of being free from illness or injury. The state of being free from illness or injury. Further definition says that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. And not merely the absence of disease and infirmity, because you can have the absence of disease and infirmity, but then you still have mental issues, social issues, etc. So when you talk about health, health is a comprehensive de definition that says uh, a complete state of physical, mental, and social well-being. Another definition for health is defined as the condition of being sound in body, in mind, and in spirit. Because you know, as human beings, we are psychosomatic whole. We are physical, we are spiritual, and we are emotional. You'll be surprised to know the root derivation or the root of uh, health. The root of health is H-A-L, how, which means to be healthy, to be whole, to be holy, and healing. In other words, healing has to be a continuum, continuous process. Did you include holiness in your health? I remember many, many years ago when uh, I was pastoring a church. And during those days, when you went to the hospital, uh, they had the book on the shelf where ministers could go and examine the books and uh, to see if your members were there. It was a strange thing to me because I noticed in that book a lot of denominations 
had members in the hospital. But there was one particular denomination whose name I would not mention at this time. You scarcely found their members in the hospital. And as we talked about health and its inclusiveness of holiness, I now can understand why most of their members did not and were not in the hospital because for them, health was not only physical, it was not only mental, but health was also a spiritual thing and spiritual in the sense that you want to be holy. It was the apostle Paul who said, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, pleasing and acceptable unto God. So when we talk about health, health is not only as we have tried to define it as physical, mental, social, etc., but health has to also do with the business of holiness. Indeed, being healthy should be a part of our daily lifestyle. You say, well, is that something new? Yes, because sometimes we forget our yearly checkup. Sometimes we forget to check in with the dentist. We forget to check in with the optician. We forget to check and make sure that this body is doing well. So just as we schedule family reunions, just as we schedule birthday parties and everything else, we need to also include checking on this body of ours to make sure it is functioning the way it is supposed to function. Because accordingly, when we make health a part of our lifestyle, it prevents chronic disease and long-term illnesses. When we make health a part of our overall lifestyle, what it does, it prevents chronic diseases and long-term illness. Sometimes when we fail to check in with the doctor on a regular basis, then we sometimes have a chronic disease that could have been prevented, but because we're not checking in on a regular basis, when it became pronounced, it was too lit and we were checking out. Never shall forget uh, a certain lady who visited the doctor all the time, all the time. And then at one point in time, the doctor says you have cancer and uh, you have less than six months to live. We were all astounded. How could that be? But they were not looking for cancer. I'm not sure what kind of doctors they were, but they were not looking for cancer. And sure enough, in six months time, that lady was gone. So making health, healthy living a part of your daily walk with God is also very, very significant. Feeling good about yourself is part of health. Taking care of your health is important because why? Your self-esteem and your self-image are tied to your health. Let me say that again. Your self-esteem, your self-image are also connected to your health. I mean, you don't feel good if you are always sick. You don't feel good if you walk like you're sick, talk like you're sick, and act like you're sick. No. So when you talk about self-esteem, which is very important, that is how you feel about yourself. Part of that has to also do with your health. Even God, believe it or not, even God is concerned about our bodies and God honors our bodies because he created it. Even though this body of ours 
is going to return to the ground and the spirit will go to be with God, yet God honors this body. Listen to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. It reads thusly, for you are bought with a price. You are bought with a price. Talking about what Jesus accomplished for us on Calvary. You were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So both the body and the spirit, they belong to God. And the scripture says, glorify God in your body. In other words, make God look good with the way you take care of your body. With the way you take care of yourself. Make God look good. I want to continue to talk about total health. When we talk about total health, complete health. It will be wonderful one of these days that we have a hospital system that focuses on total health. What is total health? Total health is spiritual wellness, emotional wellness, physical wellness, social wellness. So when you talk about total health, I hope that one of these days God will bless us to establish the kind of health system where it is one-stop shop. You go there and your spirit person is taken care of because there is somebody there to teach you about prayers. There's somebody there to take care of your emotional, psychology, counseling, etc., physical, and even social. That's total health. You know, I remember once upon a time we had the occasion to visit uh, to see what goes on or what went on in the hospital. And we discovered there is one area with people with eye problems, nose problems, ear problem, throat problem. And every area you went to, it was as though that was the only sickness in the city. This body of ours, sometimes I like to say, it is very, very expensive. And uh, it's important that we take good care of it. It has been said that health, without good health, if you do not have good health, Someone has described it as a river without water. A river without water. Let me tell you something interesting that uh, will blow your mind, talking about a river without water. In Ghana, West Africa, there is a castle called the Elmina Castle. The Elmina Castle was uh, a castle used by the Dutch people, British people, etc., to buy and transport slaves. But something has happened around that castle that is typical of what we're saying here, that the lack of good health is like a river without water. Now, accordingly, back in the 1800s, the ships used to come as close enough to the castle that they will create a bridge that will go from the castle into the ship to transport slaves. But guess what? Today, when you go to see it, you will discover something interesting, and that is the water has dried up around the castle that the ships cannot come anywhere close near the castle. Talking about the lack of good health is equivalent to a river without water. I want us to look today at a man. This man was righteous. This man was a family man. This man was very rich. This man was very generous. 
but he experienced the physical storms, bodily storms, and yet he survived. And we want to look at four things today that this man did to survive the bodily storms of life. This man is none other than Job. Job. Sometimes we heard the question raised, why should bad things happen to good people? This man is a typical example of the fact that it is possible for bad things to happen to good people. And when bad things happen to good people, you've got to believe God is somewhere in the midst of what is happening. So don't just throw your hands up and want to quit. No, because it is possible God is in what is happening. You've done your best. You worship God. You served him. You obeyed his word. You followed his commandments. You follow his precepts. You've done everything God said to do. And then if something bad happens to you, you need to know God is probably setting you up for something greater. I want you to hear what happened in the case of Job here. In Job chapter 2. Last time we talked about the first time Job was tested, his wealth that he had amassed, everything, children, everything in one day got destroyed. And you would think that after Job had lost everything, that would have been the end of his challenges. But then here comes the second of the test. It says here, one day, beginning at verse 1, Job chapter 2, it says, one day the members of the heavenly court came again to present themselves before the Lord. And the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from, the Lord asked Satan? Satan answered, the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant, Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless, a man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. And he has maintained his integrity, even though you urged me to harm him without a cause. Ah, Satan replied, to the Lord, skin for skin, a man will give up everything he has to save his life, but reach out and take away his health, and he will surely curse you to your face. Satan saying to God the importance of health. All right, do with him as you please. The Lord said to Satan, but just spare his life. So Satan left the Lord's presence and he struck Job with terrible boils, all kind of bumps on his skin from his head to his foot, from head to foot, the scripture says. I mean, the boil had become so interesting it says in verse 8, Job scraped his skin with a piece of broken pottery as he sat among the ashes. The boils, when they dry up, Job would take a pottery and scrape, and they made ashes, and he was sitting in it. His wife said to him, are you still trying to maintain your integrity? Curse God and die. But Job replied, you talk like a foolish woman. Should we accept only good things from the hand of God 
and never anything bad. So in all this, Job said nothing wrong. If that was the end, I want you to watch what has happened. Remember now, all of his wealth gone, children dead, properties gone, sickness now has come out of nowhere. In ours, in his sense, he would think that sickness had come from nowhere, but the fact about it is the sickness that he was experiencing was the result of a conversation between God and the devil. The devil said to God, the only reason why Job is worshiping you and praising you and calling upon your holy and righteous name is all because you have blessed Job, you have prospered Job, you bless him with children, you bless him with wealth, everything Job touched prospered. And God said, no, sir, that's not the reason why Job loved me. Job loves me because he just loves me. And said, well, then let's try it. You took away everything, now make him sick and see what will happen. You would think that all of his wealth is gone, all of his children, everything are dead. People will have sympathy for him. But watch what happened. Verse 11 says, when three of Job's friends heard of the tragedy he had suffered, they got together and traveled from their homes to comfort and console him. Their names were Eliphaz, the Temanite, Bill died, the Shuhite, and Zophar, the Nemanite. Watch this. When they saw Job from a distance, they scarcely recognized him. I mean, this man who used to be well groomed, wore nice clothes, was looking handsome, they could highly highly, hardly recognize him. From a distance, they could hear Job wailing, crying aloud. Now, you know he was in a lot of pain. Imagine you going to visit a sick person and as you ring the doorbell, as you knock on the door, you hear them from the inside, crying, moaning, groaning, because they are hurting. But in the case of Job from afar, when his friends saw him, they heard him wailing. He was hurting in pain. They tore their robes and threw dust into the air over their heads to show their grief. Then they sat on the ground with him, listen to this, for seven days and nights. And no one said a word to Job, for they saw that his suffering was great. No one said anything to Job. Sometimes people call this the ministry of presence, the ministry of of presence. In other words, sometimes when people are in deep mourning, people are grieving, people are hurting. When you go to visit with them, it is not always necessary for you to say something. Because sometimes when you say something, you can say sometimes the wrong thing. And so these guys went and they sat on the mat with Job seven days and seven nights. No one said anything except for the fact that Job was mourning. He was groaning. He was hurting. Yes, that's all that was happening. He was mourning. He was groaning. He was hurting. 
that said nothing. Then later on, they will start saying something. Job, you supposed to be a good man, righteous man, wonderful man. But it is not customary in our culture that a good person like yourself should have to experience this kind of tragedy. Your children, your possessions, now your sickness. Job, it may be you've done something wrong. You have sinned secretly, privately, and you thought that no one knew about it, but God knew it. And so God is here with punishing you. Job said, I've done nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, my record is up on high. I've done nothing wrong. This sickness, this tragedy that has come upon me is not because I did something wrong. My sisters and my brothers, what this particular lesson is teaching us today is that you can do all of the right things in life. And sometimes you can face terrible, serious challenges. In the case of Job, it was terrible. It was serious. I mean, here is a man who one day was extremely, extremely wealthy and rich. See, when you're wealthy, that's when your wealth makes riches for you. You're so wealthy that you're not even thinking about what is happening. You're sleeping while your money is making money for you. That's when you're wealthy. This man was holy. He was righteous. But then something bad happened to him. The good news that we have for you today is that Job survived the storm that attacked his health. What did Job do that caused him to survive the storm that hit his body? The first thing, if you remember, in Job chapter 2, verse 10, it said, Job said nothing wrong. Job said nothing wrong. I believe Job was remembering what Proverbs 18 and 21 says, and that is, life and death are in the power of the tongue. When you are sick, Use your mouth to build you up. Use your mouth as a weapon of healing. Use your mouth to elevate, to promote your health. Do not use your mouth to tear yourself down. It says in Job 2 and 10, Job said nothing wrong because Job knew that the mouth has the power to either bring death or life upon you. So let me encourage you today. When you're going through hardships, watch what comes out of your mouth. When you're going through grief, watch what comes out of your mouth. When you're going through sickness, watch what comes out of your mouth. The first thing we know that Job did to survive the bodily storms in his life was that Job said nothing wrong. He didn't say anything negative toward God. He cursed everything when you read the book. He cursed the day he was born, the night he was born, the breast that gave him milk. He cursed everything, but never ever said anything wrong against God. Number one, watch your mouth. Number two, if you read Job, the 14th chapter and the 14th verse, Job asked this question, 
If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. This is very important. Whatever you may be going through right now, whatever is happening to you right now, one of the things that you can learn from Job as a way to survive the storms of life is to know that whatever you are going through is not forever, is not everlasting, it is going to change. Job lived expecting a positive change, a positive condition in his life. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you are experiencing, no matter the grief that is going on in your life right now, I want to encourage you to look on the bright side, look on the sunny side, look at the hopeful side, look at the grace, look at the abundance, look at what God is going to do in your life. If God is good, if God is good all the time, then look out for the good that will happen in your life. It says, Job, as the question, if a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. I'm not sure what you're going through. I'm not sure what you're experiencing. But please do not make that the totality, the end of your life. Why? Because a better day is coming. As long as God is on the throne, a better day is coming for you, especially as a child of God. Number three, what did Job do? It says in Job chapter 19 and verse 26. In Job 19 and 26, Listen to this. It says, and though after my skin, worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. So in other words, even though Job was going through excruciating pain, even though Job had experienced devastating loss in his life, things were going real bad for him. But yet, Job maintained faith in God. Job maintained trust in God. Job maintained confidence in God. Job did not ever give up on God. Job was to the point where he said, even if death was to come, death is not the end. I'm going to see God for myself. If you're going to overcome my sisters, my brothers, You've got to learn to maintain your trust when things are not going well in your life. You've got to learn how to maintain your faith in God when things are not going well. You've got to learn how to be confident in the things of God, in the promises of God. Never give up. Job never, ever give up. He said, though after my skin warm destroyed his body, yet in my flesh, Shall I see God? This is not the end. I'm going to see God for myself. In other words, Job maintained faith, trust, and confidence in God. Now I want to say to you, whatever you may be going through, maintain your faith, maintain your trust, maintain your confidence in God. What did God tell you? What did God say to you? Yes. Maintain your faith and your trust in God. Lastly, what did Job do to survive the storm in his life? The fourth thing that we see Job doing to survive the storm in his life is found in Job chapter 43 and verse 10. Job chapter 43 and verse 10. It says, after Job had prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortune. The Lord gave him twice as much as before. You know, when you are doing well and you fall, a lot of people will say negative things about you. 
Sometimes your own friends will say negative things about you. And it is possible that in such a time that you can develop bitterness, bitterness, hatred, unforgiven spirit toward those people who didn't treat you well, didn't treat you nicely. But what we want to learn today is that one of the ways to survive the storms of life, especially the storm of your bodily sickness, is to learn to pray for those who didn't think too well of you, for those who looked down on you, for those who treated you shamefully. Pray for them. Forgive them. Turn it over to God. Because God said what? Vengeance is mine. I will repay. And the scripture says, after Job did that, God heard his cry. And Job was healed. And not only was Job healed, but God restored to Job twice everything he had. So if he had 7,000 sheep, God gave him 14,000. If he had 10 children, God gave him an additional 10. That's the God we serve. I want to encourage you today. Yes, while you're living and you're healthy, make the best of it. But should you come under the attack of sickness, remember what you say. Hmm? Live expectantly, positively. Hmm? Maintain your trust and your faith and confidence in God. And above all, pray for those who did not treat you so very well. Amen? Amen. God bless you.